Hey guys, so I was thinking about this uh, the whole way up to my first stop and it was uh, a lot of traffic and uh, so I had a lot to think about and I get to this stop and I gotta wait until the uh, owner gets here to do any business. But this is what I was thinking about. My last video I talked about uh, how Mark Wahlberg in Invincible played football with his friends. And if, if you didn't see the movie, uh, there's a couple scenes where they're out just uh, like in a dirt dirt parking lot playing uh, tackle football. And then one, uh, he's playing in the rain. And and I said, that so reminds me of growing up in the inner city. You know, Newark and Irvington were very much like Philadelphia. And uh, I mean, there were even times we uh, played in the schoolyard when we had, you know, a little bit of Jack Daniels to drink and the, all the schoolyards are blacktop. So we played t tackle football on the blacktop, you know, but usually we found like a, a grass lot to play in. And I usually had my crew, you know, I always ran with an older crew and we played older guys and we played rough. You know, I remember one time um, we we're playing this one team and uh, my cousin hated this guy for some reason. I don't know why. His name was Jerry Mosier. The kid was good. He was, he would make these acrobatic catches. He was really good. And my cousin was covering him. It was like the last play of the game, and uh, it was tied. And uh, this guy, um, this guy makes this acrobatic catch in the end zone. And as he's coming down, my cousin comes across with an elbow to his jaw, and the kid holds on to the ball. And I, you know, I thought for surely we were going to throw down and have a big fight with everybody. And the kid just shook it off and said, "Nice hit." <laughs> and and I, I had to shake the guy's hand. I was like, "Man, nice catch, bro." And my cousin was like, oh, man, I wanted him to freaking throw a punch at me. I wanted to fight him so bad. But uh, these were the kind of guys I ran with, you know, as I got older and not much older. Uh, we'd have bar fights all the time. I remember the Bavarian Inn in Irvington. I was a sleazy go-go bar in the corner <laughs> of Springfield Avenue. And uh, we used to love Friday nights because it was always a fight, always. And it would be like something you see on TV where, like, everybody's throwing punches. It was, like, the funnest thing, you know, for us guys back in the day. And, um, you know, they would they would serve me at 15. I'm talking like 15, 16. I mean, the age of, you know, the legal age was 18. But in the inner city, if you walked in, you carried yourself the right way and you spent a lot of money. And, you know, I was a drug dealer, so I would spend a lot of money and tip the bartender or the barmaid, you know, 100%. So they never denied me. Occasionally, they'd ask for my ID and I'd just tell them my name's Ben Franklin and hand them a $100 bill. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I always laugh. I'm like... I must be paying penance for what I did when I was a teenager because I always had so much cash in my pocket. And since I've been a married man with kids, I never have any cash in my pocket. <laughs> There's homeless guys that carry more cash around with them in their pocket, but uh, it's all good. Uh, but anyway, these are the kind of things I did. I remember one time in a bar fight in the Bavarian Inn, like punches were thrown everywhere. And I just turned around and threw a punch and I hit this guy, I happened to be a pagan. Um, biker dude I mean I knew him I was actually kind of friends with him you know I didn't I was never a pagan never rode with him or nothing but he was you know these guys always hung in the bars in my neighborhood so I knew these guys in fact I made a movie how uh, a video how the pagans saved my life they literally saved my life you know, I got the scar there the knife went in I don't know if you can see it the knife went in that side came out that side uh and if they didn't have my back they would have, I would have bled to death but uh that movie, that video is called How the Pagan Saved My Life and Jesus Saved My Soul, I think. But uh, it's an old video I made a couple of years ago. But the point of all this is I thought I was a tough guy. I thought the guys I ran with were tough guys. But I never knew what tough was. I never knew what strength was. So I became a Christian and I learned about some Christian men. You know, there was a guy when I was young, if I would have seen him, I thought he, I, I would have thought he was a nerdy country bumpkin. His name was David Wilkerson. He was a country pastor in Pennsylvania. And he's seen on the news, and you may have heard this story, he's seen on the, he's seen on the news, like 1959, uh, these gang members in New York City going to jail for murder. And he was like, they're kids, they're children. And he felt led to go out there. You know, he only had a few bucks, he had, had to sleep in his car and um, he never got to see those kids. But uh, long story short, he managed to find the leader of the biggest gang at the time, the Mau Mau's, the biggest street gang in New York City. And the leader's name was Nicky Cruz and he was known as a very violent, very vicious man. I see Nicky Cruz talk, give a talk and say, you know, he used to stab people in the stomach like literally stab them with a switchblade in the stomach and reach around and grab their wallet out of their pocket, look it in their eyes, laughing. He's a very vicious guy, you know. He thought he was he thought he was the devil because his mother told him he was a devil. You know, and parents we got 
we have power. Our words are powerful. You know, our kids believe. You know, you tell your kid he's loved by God, he's going to believe it. You tell him he's the devil, he's going to believe that too, and he's going to act out that, and he acted it out. That was his identity. He was the devil. But when um, David Wilkerson seen him, he seen a child. He seen a, he seen a scared young man. And because David Wilkerson had the love of God in him, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, he was able to tell him, Nikki, I love you, man. I want to help you. And uh, Nikki Cruz said, every time this pastor told me he loved me, I would beat him up. And then one time, he said, that the last time he told me he loved me, I was so mad. I beat him so bad, so bloody. He had so much blood on his face. He was laying on the ground. And I stuck my, I pulled out my switchblade and said, if you ever tell me you love me again, I will slice you up into a thousand pieces and sprinkle them all over Manhattan. And he said, this pastor looked at me and wiped the blood from his eyes and said, Nikki, you could cut me up into a thousand pieces and you can throw them all over the city of Manhattan. And every piece of me will shout out, Nikki, I love you. And Nikki said, it just blew his mind. He just ran, he ran and he ran. And he eventually ran into the arms of God and repented, totally gave his life over to Jesus and became an evangelist. The New York City police reported in the New York Times that every gang member turned in their weapons. They repented, there was total repentance. They all turned their lives over to Jesus. He said they were turning in guns, heroin, cocaine. Uh, that was their act of repentance. That is the power of love. That is strength. That is toughness. You know, and as Christians, I learned, I learned as Christians, it's not just strength in that way to take a beating and not, and not give up and to keep loving because love never fails. This is what my last video was about. Love never fails, the Bible says. I believe it's uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. Some versions say love never ends, but it means the same thing. It doesn't fail. Uh, but I've seen St. Padre Pio, the integrity, the strength and toughness of his integrity. I read about a man who went to confession and said, uh, Father Padre, I'm having doubts about the Pope. You know, I'm, I'm doubting if he's a good man, if he's even the Pope. And he said, P Padre Pio got so mad at him, he yelled at him and said, get out, get out, get out of my hair. I don't want to hear this blasphemy. <laughs> and he threw him out of his uh, confession. But St. Padre Pio practiced what he preached when he was unjustly told, when he was falsely accused of doing things he didn't do. And his superior said, you're no longer allowed to present the mass. You are no longer allowed to do public masses. That hurt St. Padre Pio so much. But his response was, the will of my superiors is the will of God. And when the people in the town started saying, no, oh, this Pope sucks. Ah, we got, no, that we're not going to, we're going to, you preach your son. We're going to come. We're going to rebel against the majesty and we're going to rebel against the bishop. We're going to rebel against the Vatican. You preach father. We're coming to see you. And father Saint Padre Pio scolded him and said, you go home and you obey the authorities that God has ordained. That was strength of integrity he could have been like so many weaker men like yeah i'm a, I'm a victim I, yeah i'm just trying to do the right thing and they're picking on me no he said the will of my superiors is the will of god showed integrity and strength and saint and saint maximilian kobe i told the story in my last video i won't rehash it but he literally laid down his life for a stranger there's no greater love that a man lay down his life for a friend. But how do these men love like this? They love like this because God is love and they're filled with God. You see, remember, remember Jesus, how he loved. You know, a lot of times when I talk about the love of God, people tell me, hey, that's cool you talk about the love of God, Rob, but you gotta tell people to repent and sin no more. And But sometimes I do. Sometimes I say go and sin no more, but sometimes I don't. Why? Because sometimes Jesus did and sometimes Jesus didn't. When the Pharisees were stoning that adulterous woman and they were like, okay, Jesus, Mr. Nice Guy, what are you gonna do? The law of Moses says we should stone her. We caught her in adultery. 
what do you say? And Jesus is like, yeah, that's cool. You're right. That's what the law of Moses says. All right, who's ever without sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> and they all laughed. <laughs> and Jesus, the only one qualified to cast the stone, said, well, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. But when Jesus was in the house of another Pharisee, and the sinful woman, who Bible scholars tell us was a prostitute, came and washed his feet with her tears. Jesus, knowing our minds and our hearts, knew what the Pharisee was thinking. And he was thinking, how could this man let this sinful woman touch him? If he's a prophet, he would know. If he was a man of God, he would know this woman's a horrible, dirty, filthy, sinful woman. And yet he let her kiss his feet, wipe his feet with her tears and her hair. Because Jesus said to him, to whom much is forgiven, they love much. Who's ever forgiven a lot, loves a lot. And she loves me a lot. And he told that woman, your faith has saved you. He didn't mention anything about going and sin no more to that woman because Jesus knows our heart. And when you have an encounter with Jesus and you fall in love with Jesus, you're not going to want to sin. Jesus said, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And the Pharisees will turn around. If you love God, you'll obey him. And Jesus is like, no, if you love me, you're going to obey me. <laughs> if you love me, you'll obey me. And that woman that was washing his feet loved him. You know, uh, Romans, I forget the verse, but I know it's Romans. Uh, St. Paul says, the kindness of God leads us to repentance. The kindness of God leads us to repentance. So it's going to be automatic when you experience the righteous one, when you experience the holy God, the only, the only holy God. Jesus, you're going to feel sorrow for your sins and you're going to repent and go to confession because you wanna, you, you, you just are so sorry for your sins. And again, when you love, when you're filled with God's love, because the Bible says God is love. So when you're filled with God, filled with his Holy Spirit, when you're filled with the Eucharist, Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will abide in you. So when you're feeding, when God is feeding you with himself, you can't help but to love. And you see a great example in Pope Francis when he's washing the feet, you know, when, you're wa when he's washing the feet of sinners, you know, Jesus had his feet washed by that sinful woman. But then he went and washed the feet of his apostles because Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. The son of man came to serve. And what an awesome example we have in Pope Francis, how he washes the feet, not only of his bishops, but he washes the feet of sinful women in prison, their dirty, stinking feet, and he'll kiss their feet. And people get appalled, like, that's nasty. Why would he do that? You know, I have one, one friend said, why is he washing the feet of this Muslim guy in Africa and kissing his feet? Like he was appalled at that. And I said, because you know what? Jesus told us, whatever we do to the least of these, we do unto him. So when Pope Francis is kissing the feet of dirty sinners, kissing the dirty feet of sinners in jail, he's kissing the feet of Jesus and he knows that. That's why you see a joy on his face. So love God. Be tough and stay Catholic.